I am truly grateful to have you back to participate in part two of this small series, where we will delve into the fascinating question of whether purchasing used lithium ion cells from old laptop batteries is a financially sound decision. If you've recently joined us and haven't had a chance to watch part one, I strongly encourage you to do so before proceeding. Watching part one will provide valuable context and enhance your understanding of the arguments and methodologies we'll be discussing. You can easily find that video by clicking the link conveniently located in the top right corner of your screen. In part one, we began our exploration with a total of over 120 lithium ion cells, but by the conclusion of the video, we had narrowed it down to just 80 cells through careful selection. In today's segment, we will continue this analysis starting from those remaining 80 cells. Our main objective today is to measure the internal resistance of each of these cells using a straightforward yet cost-effective method known for its accuracy. Identifying cells with an internal resistance greater than 100 milliomes is our central goal, as we'll ultimately want to exclude these from our selection. Additionally, stay tuned for part 3 of this series, where I will guide you through the process of measuring the milliamps of each cell using a DIY tool I've developed. To ensure the success of this project, we will require several essential items. A battery holder case to securely hold the cells, a resistor to help us measure resistance, two crocodile clips for connections, a multimeter for accurate voltage readings, and of course the lithium ion cells themselves that we will be testing. For this demonstration, I will be utilizing a 2.2 ohm 20 watt ceramic wire wound resistor. I recommend opting for a 1 ohm resistor instead, as it simplifies the calculation significantly. The first step involves connecting the battery holder case to the multimeter. In my case, I opted to use stripped wires from the multimeter for ease of connection with the battery holder. Each side of the circuit was attached with crocodile clips, which I subsequently secured with tape to prevent any accidental short-circuiting, ensuring a safe and effective setup. As I proceed with the assembly, it's crucial to emphasize why understanding the internal resistance of each cell is paramount before embarking on constructing your own battery pack. The internal resistance of a lithium ion cell serves as a vital indicator of its overall health and performance capability. It greatly influences key factors such as power delivery, energy efficiency, and the heat produced during operation. Given that the cells in question have experienced significant wear and tear due to previous usage, Knowing their internal resistance is essential for ensuring their reliability and safety in future applications. To quantify the internal resistance of each cell, we will adhere to a specific formula. First, we measure the open circuit voltage of the cell when it's not under load. Then, we will connect our resistor and measure the voltage across the cell again. Utilizing Ohm's law, we will calculate the current flowing through the circuit. Subsequently, we will apply Kirchhoff's law to ascertain the voltage drop across the internal resistance of the cell. Finally, we will employ Ohm's law once more to compute the internal resistance based on our measurements. To keep things engaging and avoid overwhelming you with calculations, I'll provide detailed examples from three different cells sourced from three distinct countries, South Korea, China, and Japan. I decided to kick off the testing with a Panasonic cell manufactured in Japan. Initially, this cell exhibited an open circuit voltage of 3.69 volts. After connecting my 2.2 ohm resistor, the voltage subsequently dropped to 3.47 volts, resulting in a voltage drop of 0.22 volts. To determine the current, I divided the voltage reading of the cell with the resistor connected, 3.47 volts, by the resistance, 2.2 ohms, which calculated to approximately 1.58 amps. I then calculated the internal resistance by dividing the voltage drop, 0.22 volts, by the current, 1.58 amps, yielding a resistance value of 0.139 ohms. To convert this measurement into milliohms, I multiplied by 1000, which resulted in 139 milliohms. It's also essential to note that the wires I used for this setup were relatively bulky, 
which introduces additional resistance into the measurement. To account for this, I assigned a total resistance of 50 milliams to the wiring. Thus, I subtracted this value from the total milliams obtained for the Panasonic cell to ensure that the readings were as accurate as possible. Thus, the final calculated internal resistance for the Panasonic cell was approximately 89 milliams, which I carefully recorded on the cell for future reference. For future re Next, I turned my attention to a cell produced by LG, a well-known South Korean brand. Using the same formula as before, I ensured to account for the 50 milliams of wire resistance as I conducted the measurements. After completing my calculations, I arrived at a reading of 212 milliohms for the LG cell. This figure significantly exceeds my desired threshold of under 100 milliohms, indicating that this cell likely wouldn't be viable for my battery pack project. Subsequently, I decided to test an unbranded lithium ion cell sourced from China, and the results surprised me quite a bit. I encountered an extraordinarily high internal resistance reading of 4000 milio ohms, which left me perplexed. Initially, I anticipated that the worst performing cells would fall within a resistance range of 250 to 350 milio ohms. The dramatic deviation in this reading led to considerable confusion, especially since I employed the same calculation method for this cell as the others. I would appreciate your thoughts on this unexpected result, as I am eager to understand how such a discrepancy could occur in the measurements. I'm questioning the validity of an internal resistance measurement I've encountered. 4000 milliohm seems remarkably high and raises the question of whether such significant damage can occur within a cell. I genuinely appreciate your thoughts and any insights you can share in the comments section below. For those who may express skepticism about my methodology, I want to emphasize that I meticulously re two preceding cells and consistently achieved comparable results. It's crucial to understand that the internal resistance of lithium ion cells remains relatively stable regardless of whether the cell is fully charged or fully discharged. This means there's no requirement to charge the cells to their full capacity prior to conducting these tests, which simplifies the process considerably. After devoting an entire day to these calculations, I was able to salvage only 23 viable cells out of an original batch of 80. It's significant to mention that we actually began with over 120 cells in total. Here's how the internal resistance broke down across this selection. Seven cells exhibited resistance values ranging from 70 to 80 milliohms. Six cells showed resistance between 80 and 100 milliohms, 90 milliohms. Another six cells fell within the 90 to 100 milliohm range. Initially, I had set a threshold of 100 milliohms for accepting any cells. However, given the remarkably low yield rate, I made the difficult decision to include four cells that were rated slightly above this limit at 103 milliohms. A particularly interesting observation is that all 23 cells that passed my rigorous testing were harvested from 25 distinct laptop batteries. This leads me to wonder, does this indicate that Japan is synonymous with high quality lithium ion cells in Asia? The composition of these 23 cells is noteworthy as well. They are primarily from two manufacturers, Panasonic and Sanyo. Out of the total, 21 cells are from Panasonic, while only two come from Sanyo. I suspect that the inclusion of those Sanyo cells, both clocking in with an internal resistance of 84 milliohms, could be attributed to sheer luck rather than indicative of consistent quality. One aspect that gives me confidence in the performance of Panasonic cells is the diversity within the 21 cells harvested. They belong to four different Panasonic models. Could this diversity point to a larger trend or is it merely coincidental? I'm open to differing opinions and insights, so please don't hesitate to share your thoughts, critiques or frustrations regarding my observations in the comments. 
at this juncture, I find myself reluctant to attempt harvesting cells from scratch again, especially after the challenges faced during this process. My next step is to test the milliamp hours for each of the 23 remaining cells, which means I'll need to compile a separate upload for part 3 of this series. In that installment, I plan to demonstrate how to construct a DIY milliamp hour tester. To make sure you don't miss this upcoming content, please consider subscribing and activating the notification bell. If you found part 2 enlightening or helpful, I would be truly grateful if you could give the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sticking with me through part 2 and I look forward to connecting with you in part 3.